Morning guys, welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm. Wow, what a difference a day makes. I mean, yesterday it was all sunshiny and just blue skies, something else. And today we wake up to this beautiful rain and it's making a love, amazing sound, uh, pitter-pattering on top of my uh, porch here. And on top of that, the smells, it is just amazing, beautiful smells. Well guys, I was reading three articles this morning and they're all a little bit different, but I think somewhat interconnected. So the first one has to do with the Chinese Yuan. Well, apparently the Chinese Yuan is now outpacing the Canadian, Australian, and Swiss currencies to become the world's fifth largest traded currency. And this is a major, major deal. And we know that the Chinese have already issued their central bank digital currency, the Yuan, and it is being uh, tested and it's actually out in it's going to be in full force very very soon and of course the chinese have tied that their currency to their social credit system which is really quite amazing i mean if you don't actually behave in a particular way and actually do certain things that they can actually start to shut your money off and really try to uh, manipulate your behavior through the influence of their currency because of course cbdc's are programmable cash and that's what they're doing well huh. this next article that i was reading is about the new british prime prime minister pm uh rishi sunak yeah anyway this billionaire and his family have amazing ties to the WEF, World Economic Forum, and they are linked into owning portions of these social credit companies. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, the way in which this guy became PM is not even through the normal democratic process the way that we would think. It wasn't a general election. And so here you've got this billionaire oligarch, member of the WEF, and a supporter of all of this social credit stuff, and an owner and investor in companies that do it. Quite amazing. And the third article. Third article had to do with ISO 222. So apparently because uh, Christine Lagarde came out uh, from the, East, uh, the European Central Bank and saying, hey, they wanted to push back their timeline, well, now SWIFT globally has said, hey, let's push this whole thing back to the, the spring of 2023, to March of 2023, which, by the way, guys, as far as I'm concerned, for us in this space, what an opportunity for us. We have been just given a little bit of a, a, a period to accumulate in, and it is, to me, a really great idea. Maybe idea is the wrong word, but... <laughs> It is a great opportunity as far as I'm concerned that they've pushed this back. But it, all these three seem to somewhat line up to me. And the reason is, is because I think there's an agenda afoot here. Absolutely, 100%. Don't kid yourself if you don't think that you're going to see this whole social credit thing be pushed into the UK, into the greater parts of the West, and come over here to the United States and Canada for sure, Australia for sure. And also with the implementation of these CBDCs. And you're looking at the U.S. dollar being severely attacked and, and the potential for it to lose its world reserve currency status. And especially when you see the Chinese yuan marching up there and literally becoming higher traded on the Forex exchanges than a lot of Western currencies are. That is a big deal. And so I think there's something afoot here and all of these are tied together and that you've got this new PM that got in there, not through the normal Westminster democratic process, but is now the prime minister and he's got some heavy duty ties to the WEF and all this stuff. You're going to see it and don't think it's not going to jump across the pond. It's going to be on our shores in America before you know it in a heartbeat because this is the way they want things to go. They want to be able to reward behavior and punish behavior. And what's the best way to do that, guys, is through monetary policy. And what's the easiest way to implement monetary policy in this new system? It's through programmable currency, central bank digital currencies. And I know this is going to be a hot topic and a big hot debate. But I think you're going to see a lot of compromise on this issue going forward because it's a government's greatest temptation. The level of control that they will be able to exert 
through the issuance of central bank digital currency has never been known in the history of mankind. It is going to be absolutely amazing and maybe a little terrifying at that. So guys, I thought I'd touch base on something else because, you know, I get critiqued quite a bit from coming out and being overly positive and uh, getting on and really just being very affirmative and, and that and, and a lot of folks say selling hopium and stuff like that. So I want to address that for a second. Mm. So for me, I, this comes naturally for me and I'm going to explain why in a couple minutes here. But on top of it being a natural response for me to look at the positive, which, you know, didn't come naturally as something I had to learn to employ in my life. I look at this space and I can see it down the road. And I don't think it takes too much effort to actually be able to see how the world is transitioning from this current monetary system into a new digital monetary system. And on top of that, along with all of our digital IDs and everything like that, you can just see this massive transition. And then you've got confirmations like the, the world, um, gold council those guys coming out and advocating for the tokenization of gold that's a big big one and then you see you know the iso messaging standards and all that's going in there and a lot of countries in the world are are getting ready to launch their central bank digital currencies i mean there's just too many confirmations out there to say that the world is not changing so for me it's like look are you kidding me it's like there's a digital gold rush going on out here and you're in a position to really benefit. And so I look at that and I have a very positive outlook, regardless of what my current circumstances are right now. Now, guys, I want to share something with you, how I came about that. So about 25, 30 years ago, I went through probably one of the most horrific divorces that you can possibly imagine. And it start, when it started off, I had two houses and four cars. And by the time it was over, I had about $3,000 left, just enough to pay first month's rent and damage deposit to a really broken down townhouse. And it was very, very difficult in my life. And not to mention that, you know, I lost my children and could only see them once in a while and stuff like that. And the pain, my goodness, I'm telling you. And I felt like life was over. But thank God for this some people came into my life and just started to invest in me and i started to discover that although that was my current circumstance that wasn't going to be my forever plan and i'm telling you god came into my life and he completely rescued me you want to know why i'm a believer in jesus christ because i watched him do such a transformation in my life such a miraculous change that nobody else could have done. It wasn't happenstance, it wasn't circumstance, it wasn't just the passage of time. No, there was an intervention in my life where people, God used other people in my life and he himself opening doors that I just never foresaw happening changed everything for me. And over the course of, you know, a number of years, I saw a development take place in me where there was such a great sense of change and hope. And I became somebody who really was willing to believe in a better tomorrow. And I have learned in life that, yeah, you can go through some fire. There's no doubt about that. I know what it feels like to feel like a flickering wick that, hey, someone could just come along and snuff you out like that. But I also know what it is to have someone come along and see God fan that into a flame and change such a change in me. And I have watched him do some amazing works in my life. And now looking back, hey, it's kind of interesting. You know, hindsight is 2020 to be sure, right? Because we can look back and we can see all these steps in our life and we can kind of put it together. That's why that happened. This is why that took place and all of that. And so I have literally become somebody who believes there is a tomorrow ahead of me. And beyond that, look, I don't care... Well, it, I don't care isn't the right word. It does not matter, guys, what we believe or not. Let's all agree on this. At some point in time, this life is going to end for us, right? The, our story here is going to be over, regardless what the pages and the chapters say. At some point, it's going to be over. Now, for me, I don't look at it like it being an end because this is my journey. It's not my destination. 
and I have a hope that goes way beyond what I'm going to experience in this life down the road. And don't think that I don't understand what it feels like to feel pain, but in the face of that pain, to have hope, because I'm telling you, hope is one of those quintessential elements that we have got to have to have any expectation of a positive future. You lose all hope, you've almost lost it all. Don't let people rob you of your hope thinking that your today is going to always be your tomorrow. It's not. It's your right now. It's not your forever. I can attest to that. I am a personal, living, walking, talking example of what God can do in someone's life and give them tremendous hope. That's why I'm so positive. And that's why I'm so positive in this space. Because I can see down the road how things are going to change. I literally can see it in my mind's eye. And I believe it is going to be something amazing. Now, I hope you got some encouragement from that. And I get it. Not everyone's going to subscribe to what I subscribe to. But needless to say, you have got to have a reason for having hope. And for me, I'm going to tell you something. My reason is I have a tomorrow. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Now, that's my reason for hope. And guys, I can't change that. And I wouldn't want to change that. I wouldn't want to change all that stuff I went through that brought me here to today. And that's what it is. That's all it is. And I am going to be a positive person. Now, for those that think it's just chilling and hopium and that, well, hey, I can't talk you into it. Because if I could talk you into it, then, hey, someone else is going to talk you out of it. But that's just where I'm at. That's just who I am. And I hope that encourages some folks out there that are going through a really tough circumstance right now, whether it is a divorce, whether it's a loss of a child, whether it's a loss of a loved one, whatever it is, I want you to know somebody does care. And there are people out there that will come alongside and encourage you. And I do believe they're like messengers sent from heaven. Now, that's how I feel about it. So, guys, hey, I hope that encourages you. And I, I'm going to have a video out later on today, being that it's Friday and the weekend, guys. It's for family and friends. That's how I look at it. So I hope you're going to have a great weekend. And we'll catch you later on this afternoon with our regularly released video. And until then, take care.